There's a lot of weird stuff living in the swamp. Water devils, hellhounds, and of course, a unique competitive horror game about whatever it takes to extract a grisly prize from a haunted backwater. Yep, it's Hunt Showdown. Like a gourmet mushroom growing on the underside of some disgusting log, Hunt has quietly become one of the best multiplayer games on PC. And because it came to Steam Early Access, we got to experience the transition firsthand. It's time to look back on the evolution of Hunt and take stock, while firmly gripping the stock of your rifle. Aim well, because you don't want to miss. The reload on this thing is a killer. Some of Hunt's most fascinating changes happened before it even came out. Originally a spiritual successor to Darksiders, called Hunt Horrors of the Gilded Age, it would have been the debut project of Crytek USA. After the studio shut down however, the project was brought home to the company's Frankfurt HQ, where it became an FPS. With the period setting already locked in, the developer doubled down on its classical weaponry, which gives Hunt its steady, unrushed pace. Patience is a virtue in this game, not to mention a survival tool. Hunt is sometimes referred to as a Bayou Royale, top marks for wordplay. And there is something to the comparison. Like PUBG, Hunt takes a large open world and pushes players gradually closer together, triggering high stakes encounters. It's a smart way to compress the best bits of Day Z into bite sized matches, whilst preserving the permadeath. For the real Warzone heads, Crytek added a quick play mode in early access. Usually in Hunt, you never lose so long as you make it out alive. But in quick play, all 12 players are damned, chasing after a single wellspring that will save them from burning up once the match timer hits zero. It's a recipe for desperate, clumsy clashes, and a great trial by fire for a new character if you're adding one to your roster. When they win, they get christened with an antiquated name like Reinhard Winkler or Tamrat Finch, which is a prize in itself. Hunt was initially designed to be played alone or in duos, but by popular request, Crytek enabled teams of three. I really like the contrast of different sized squads. You'll often be sneaking through the woods, taking care to be neither seen nor heard, and pick up the telltale signs of a trio. In a game with so many audio cues, three sprinting players sounds like a brass band falling down a flight of stairs. All that noise exposes them to ambushes, but then again, there are three of them. Are you really going to pick that fight? Every player in Hunt is competing to take down a big baddie, which will be crashing around an old church or warehouse somewhere on the map. Each one has a singular design, like the scurrying spider or towering butcher, but they all share a sense of tragedy, as if they've been wronged somehow. My favourite is Scrapbeak, a Civil War soldier who's lost his legs and was warped by trauma. He was introduced earlier this year and built to force players out of old habits. Like a magpie, Scrapbeak surrounds himself with gear like traps and ammo. Only by going on the offensive can you cause him to shred his supplies, then hoover them up during the fight. It's a neat reversal on the game's preparation phase, and also pretty creepy. Is it possible to get trench foot in Hunt Showdown? To be honest, none of my characters have lived long enough to find out, but it couldn't hurt for them to hit dry land once in a while, if only to bail out their boots. That's why it's exciting to see the game's next map, where the soil is apparently solid enough to carry a whole train without losing it in the quagmire. Sure, the bushfires might burn half your health bar away, leaving you vulnerable to one shots from zombies, but hey, look at the choo choo. There's something warm and reassuring about a once great developer finding its groove again. Back in the day, PC gamers have sided entirely on screenshots of the original Far Cry, and for years, Crisis was the de facto test to find out whether you'd built a new PC properly, or just spent months' pay on an expensive footrest. But Crytek went off the boil afterwards, as it struggled to balance commercial appeal with open world innovation. Thanks to Hunt Showdown, we can stop feeling bad about all that. Its success is a testament not just to the game's evolution, but to Crytek itself. There's a lot of Far Cry's stealth simulation in here, but applied in a way that uses players to create endless set pieces, rather than 15 hours of explosions. The result is the studio's best game ever, even if the screenshots do always come out a bit dark. <laughs>